Guitar heroes, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here. My friends, let me ask you, are you one of those guitar players that do not want to become a lead guitar player? You're not necessarily going for the pro status, maybe not a studio guitar player. You just want to play some chords sing some choruses, lead some folks in some songs, whether it's like a youth group situation or a campfire or during Christmas time or something like that. My friends, if you answered yes, you are in the right place because today I'm going to show you the top six things that you need to know for playing campfire guitar. So literally, I'm going to show you just the six things that you need to know to run off and do this and be really, really, really good at it without all the stuff that you don't need to know. If that sounds like your cup of tea, my friends, stick around. My friends, if you are new to watching my videos, then welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you find that the content in this lesson helps you, please hit subscribe, hit that bell icon as well so that you don't miss out on any future videos that I'm doing or the future guitar giveaways and the thousands of dollars worth of goodies that we give away every single month. All right, my friends, let's get to that lesson. All right, my friends, as promised, the top six things to know for playing campfire guitar songs. I'm gonna tell you these six, six things right out of the gate, then I'm going to give you an overview of what it is that you need to know regarding these, and then I'm going to give you information where you can drill down even further to get more information for free. All right, my friends, here we go. Here are the six things, and I'm looking at my little cheat sheet here right now. Number one, how to strum, number one, Listen, you've got to know how to strum. We're strumming, we're hitting the strings, and we're chording, or we're playing some melody. That's what guitar is. It's fretting and it's striking the strings in some way. And when it comes to campfire guitar, we gotta do some strumming. Nine essential chords. I'm gonna tell you these nine essential chords here in just a moment. Literally, if you have the nine essential chords and you know number three, which is the next thing I'm gonna show you here, Literally, you can play millions of songs, even though there are tens of thousands of different types of chords and different structures that you can play on the guitar, you don't need all of that to play millions of songs, all right? Number three is how to use a capo and why and when to use a capo. A capo is a little device like this that allows you to move all up and down the fretboard and play in all these different keys so that you can match the key to whatever it is you're singing or the crowd is singing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, cool, I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a moment here. The repertoire, you need to have repertoire. So this is a list of songs. I'm gonna show you where you can build this list of songs, but you've gotta have some repertoire because you can know all the things that I'm gonna show you today, not know some songs, and people are gonna look at, be looking at you sideways because they wanna know, hey, when are you gonna play the song? Okay, all right, number uh, five is signature licks. And what I mean by that is typically a lick that would start a song or a riff or a musical motif, a musical passage that when you play it, everybody's ears go, I know what song that is, okay? And number six, some basic finger picking. And I mean just basic, okay? I promise you, you are going to get this. It's super simple stuff. Let's do this, okay? Now, here we go. So how to strum and why? I'm going to give you a basic overview of strumming. Essentially, when, we're, when we have a song and we're tapping our foot, one, two, three, four, when our foot hits the ground, that's called a down beat. When our foot comes up, it's called an up beat. What we want in strumming is we want the down strum, when we hit the strings down like this, we want that to be in tandem with the down beat. When we do an up strum, we want that to be in tandem with the up beat. So for instance, if I'm just strumming down, and I'm tapping my foot like this to a song, you know? That's the way it'll look, okay? So my foot's hitting the ground, you can hear my foot tapping, and I'm strumming down. If I were to strum up, it's gonna be on the upbeat. Strum up, 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 okay? Now, with that being said, there are lots of little different rhythmic patterns that you can do that will help you to fill out all these different types of songs. But I'm gonna show you the most important strumming pattern, which is this. It goes one, two, and, and four, and. Now, why do I say you should know that one? Well, because it's literally in probably 75 to 80% of the songs that are out there. So if you know this strum, you can apply it to many, many songs, okay? So it's gonna go like this. One, two, and, and four, and. Now, it 
gets a little bit tricky, and I'm not going to sit here and coach you through this part here, but we're going to do it a little bit because I have a whole video that will help you to, to do this where I actually coach you, okay? And it's free, all right? So what we're going to do for this is one, two, and, and four, and. Remember, the numbers are down strikes, down strums, and the up strums are on the ands, okay? You always want to keep your hand moving. So we don't want to do this, which is very common for like every guitar player in the beginning to do this. One, two, and, and four, and. Because now we're backwards. You might not have caught that, but one, two, and, and four, and. We don't need to stall up here. We need to keep our hands moving even though we don't hit the strings. It's called a ghost strum. Ghost, like a ghost, woo, right? One, two, and, and four, and. So when I hit my, put my hand down here and I didn't strike the strings, that's called a ghost strum. You want to do that always. Keep that hand moving when you're strumming, okay? One, two, and, and four, and. One, two, and, and four, and. If it helps, you can always hit your, your thigh or your knee or the bottom of your guitar here, like one, two, and, give you something to do because the mind is funny it does not want it wants to stall here trust me try this on your own without doing that and you're going to see what I'm talking about that being said everything that I'm talking about here today I cover in really high detail for absolutely free in another in a in a course that's not here on YouTube it's at yourguitarsage.com/30 so any of these items if you're not getting it right away it's totally okay no one would right i'm terrible at mandarin cuz i don't speak Chinese. I don't speak Mandarin, okay? So no one should be great at guitar just starting off. So if you need more help, you can go to that, that link. I'll mention it again later, and I'll put it in the description of this video. Otherwise, anything that I'm talking about here today, I'll be able to help you out with in that free course. Okay, so you got to know how to strum because it's going to give a sound, a specific sound. If we were playing Folsom Prison Blues, right, we need this sound, this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. that my strumming on the down beats, I'm strumming down. And on the up beats, I'm strumming up. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and, okay? And I teach that one as well in that free course. Okay, so let's talk about the nine essential chords. Nine essential chords, what are you talking about, Eric? There are thousands of chords. Well, there's actually probably tens of thousands of chords when we talk about inversions and jazz chords and everything else and all the different variations. But alas, we don't need to know all that. And sometimes life is knowing what not to learn so that you can make room for the things to learn, right? Especially in today's day and age. So nine essential chords. If you know these nine chords, you literally can play millions of songs. And you don't have to memorize it because, again, this is in the free course that I'm going to give you. But here it goes. G major, C major, D major, D minor, E minor, E major, E A minor, A major, and B7. And those are all open chords. There's no barring if you don't want to bar up bar a chord, you've got not those nine essential chords that lets you, that's going to let you play literally millions of songs, okay? Now every now and then you're going to probably run into a chord that you may not be able to play. Maybe skip that song or put it in a different key and then you're off to the races, okay? Again, we're trying to parse things down just so we can be very focused so we can only focus on the things that we actually need to learn instead of learning thousands of chords, okay? These nine essential chords, I've taught this for over 30 years and it, my, my students are able to play literally thousands of songs, okay? So, um, although you'll be able to play millions of songs if you want that much in your repertoire, which we're going to talk about here in just a moment. How to use a capo and why? This is a capo. Some people call it a capo. Well, wherever you're from, the, the, the Brits call it uh, capo, I believe. Uh, capo, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. You could call it whatever you want to call it. Nonetheless, this little clippy thing that goes on your guitar, it allows you to change keys. So why is that important, Eric? Well, it's important because instead of you having to do a bunch of bar chords, which is when you're going to take your 
first finger and lay it down like this. If you've ever tried to play bar chords, a lot of folks don't like it at first. It's a it's another step up in your guitar playing. So what we can do is we can use a capo, which will allow us to play the same feeling chords. So if I'm playing G, C, and D, I can just move this up and down. And all these different keys play the same form chord, but I'm using the capo, okay? Uh, so that's what you're going to do with the capo. You really need to know how to understand how to use it, at least how to know the different keys. And that's not very hard at all. Uh, I have a, a colorful matrix in that system for you, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, that'll, that'll actually show you exactly if I'm playing a C chord and an F and a G, but I'm capoed at the fourth fret, what key am I in? It'll show you how to do all that stuff, okay? So you got to know how to use your capo, indeed. Okay, number four, repertoire. Okay, now here's the deal. What is repertoire? Repertoire is your list of songs that are go-to songs that you can do at any time, okay? So you got to have these songs because when you're, at, when you're at grandmother's and it's Christmas time and you need to play, okay, you can't be like, ah, oh, let me go to the internet and look for some chords. These need to be in you. You need to play them enough to where you have them memorized. And it's not hard to do, okay? So that a repertoire is your list of songs that you know well. You're not having to look. I mean, I suppose you could look at some sheet music or some chord charts or what have you, but you should be familiar with it. That's repertoire. How do you build that? Well, here's a perfect place to do it here on YouTube. I myself have over a thousand videos here of all different types of songs, Christmas songs and uh, rock and roll and pop and what have you. In fact, if you want to look for some songs for yourself using all these same ideas that we're talking about here today, search Your Guitar Sage and your favorite artist name, Your Guitar Sage Elvis, Your Guitar Sage Clash, Your Guitar Sage Beatles, and I promise you, you're going to find some really cool songs that I've taught that are classics, okay? So that's how you're going to build your repertoire. You can bring that with you so that when you're playing for the youth group or just playing for friends around the campfire, you've got some songs to go to. You gotta have some of them you gotta have them memorized. Otherwise you're gonna be carrying paper with you everywhere. You don't want to do that. Okay? So repertoire, very, very important. Signature licks, right? Does this sound familiar? Right, Jenny, eight, uh, eight, uh, five, five, three, oh, nine, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine, right? You remember that song? So, a signature lick is basically a lick that allows you to know what song's being played. Right, Folsom Prison Blues. When we hear that lick, that hadn't been done in any other song specifically like that. Okay, so we're not gonna go. That'd be weird, right? Even though it's in the same key. So when we hear that, that is the signature lick. Okay, so knowing some signature licks to if a song has it, okay, like for instance, False and Prison Blues, even if you're not a lead guitar player, you're just learning a couple little, little melody notes there in the beginning is huge because that's going to initiate your listener's ear to go, oh, I love this song, okay? So if you have, if the song has a signature lick, throw it in there, I promise you, it's gonna make a big difference in your playing as opposed to just playing the chords, okay? The last one, my friends, number six, is basic finger picking. Why basic finger picking? Because sometimes songs just need to be played finger picked, right? Sometimes it just needs to be nice and subtle. Right? So we gotta do some basic finger picking. Now, what are the rules of finger picking? Here are the rules for finger picking. The thumb takes care of strings six, five, and four, while fingers one, two, and three take care of strings three, two, and one. Okay? And we're counting the, the, the lowest string here is the sixth string, whereas the high, when we say high, high in pitch, that's the first string. Okay, so it goes up one, two, three, four, five, six. So the thumb takes care of the top three strings and fingers one, two, and three take care of strings three, two, and one, respectively. So this is called resting positions when you take your thumb, put it on the sixth string, and then put one, two, and three on strings three, two, and one. It's called resting position. It's a great way to get acquainted with finger picking, okay? Just doing that. Just take your hand, lay it on top. This is the first finger picking lesson that I teach all my students. Lay your hand there. You can actually feel it. 
it's a great habit to get into so that you can get familiar with the strings without having to look all the time. I can literally just touch, move my hand together here, and all the fingers are in the right place. The next exercise that you would do is you would just do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. At your own pace. Nobody gets this at first. Everybody's awkward with this at first. Just why, for the same reason, everybody um, who's learning a new language or learning how to juggle or walk a tightrope, everybody has a problem with it at first, okay? So it's a new, it's a new task. So be, be cool with yourself. Be easy on yourself. Uh, don't, don't be easy on yourself. I should say practice a lot, but, but you know, be forgiving and understand that it's going to take a little while to get it, okay? But the practice fixes everything, okay? Now, my friends, I've shown you some basic finger picking. I've showed you all these other little bits and pieces. All right, my friends, now I showed you a lot about finger picking and how to strum the nine essential chords, all the rest. Now, I know for some of you, you got all this, right? For some of you, you got parts of it, and others of you, others of you, it just went over your head, and you're like, I'm really going to need more help, Eric. And my friends, that is why I created this top 30 lessons that I teach all my students. It's free. Yourguitarsage.com slash 30. 30. I'll put the link in the description of this video. It's literally the top 30 lessons that I teach all my students. I've had hundreds of thousands of folks go through this and they've seen, they've massively grown their foundation that allows them to do all these fun things. All right, so check that out. So that is it, my friends. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, please smash that thumbs up button and I would love to hear from you. Please let me know how this video helped you below. Would love to hear from you. Hey, did you know I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all those places? I sure am. And we do all sorts of amazing giveaways. In fact, we give away thousands and thousands of dollars worth of guitars, courses, books, swag, all sorts every single month. And I would love you to be part of that. Yourguitarsage.com slash live. Or if you join any of the social media uh, bits there, I always advertise on there and let folks know, hey, when we're going live and that sort of thing. In fact, I do about 20 hours of live every single month. And I would love to answer those questions for you on those broadcasts. So my friends, as always, be kind to all beings. Do the right thing, always. Practice your guitar. I'll see you in the next video.